If you're one of my uh, folks getting baptized today, come on up. One of those three, those three. <clears throat> one of the best things that we get to do in the church is to see uh, anybody be baptized um, into our faith. And so I'm going to read what, what is written in our Church of the Nazarene manual. And uh, we've talked through what baptism is. Come on in. We've talked through what baptism is to each of uh, these three, and uh, and they they know what they're what they're doing and what it means, what it what it uh, the symbolic act, um, the grace that it shows and receives. So, as they make their way in, come on up and stand right here in the middle. I'm going to face you. You're going to face your church, and I'm going to read this to you. Christian baptism is a sacrament signifying participation by faith in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and incorporation into his body, the church. It is a means of grace proclaiming Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Apostle Paul declares that all who are baptized into, G into Christ Jesus are baptized into his death. We are buried with him through baptism so that just as Christ was raised from the dead, we too are raised to light, to walk in newness of life. As we have been united with him in his death, we will also be united with him in his resurrection. The Christian faith into which you now come to be baptized is affirmed in the Apostles' Creed, which we confess, and I'll read it to you. We believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you be baptized into this faith today? If so, respond with, I will. Do you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and do you believe that he saves you now? If so, respond, I do by faith. As a member of the Church of Jesus Christ, will you follow him all the days of your life, growing in grace and love of God and of your neighbors? If so, respond, I will with God's help. I didn't have much of a life before with the church. My parents divorced when I was little. The trio of my mother, sister, and I, and I moved around for a bit. Then my mother met Jeff and everything changed for, in our lives. In May of 2010, our house was flooded and Jeff let us live in it with him. He treated us like we were his own kids. Jeff used to attend this church, but due to some things he was dealing with, he left. My mother and Jeff got married in February 2011 and he, and he finally became the father I didn't have the most of my life. He was willing to change his life because he loved me, he, he, because he loved us and our mother. His, his mother used to bring us to church every Sunday. Eventually we moved on, we moved in with her. She had no hesitation to let us live with her. She welcomed us with open arms. If it wasn't, if it wasn't for Jeff and his mom, I wouldn't be, be in the church today. They are, they are the ones that have helped me, helped me on my journey through the, through the church. I've been coming to church for years, and I've never, really, I've never really felt a connection to God. I thought I would just skate through life doing whatever I wanted, and I would, I would just repent later on. For years, for years, people came and went, but it was hard for me to feel anything. I was never the person to just let my feelings out. In the past year, many things have happened, and it made me realize that I needed something more. I know, I know that I need a better relationship with God, on January 5th, 2019, everything changed during winter retreat with our youth group. I had, I had been praying for an answer for a reason as to why things were happening in my life. I felt like I deserved an answer for everything. The first day and a half came and went, and nothing happened. In our, in our final small group session before the final service, I prayed that I would get something out of it. God, God delivered just like he, was, like he always does. I can't explain it, but God moved through me, and I know he, he spoke to other people there as well. He answered me, maybe not in the way that I wanted, but it, 
but it's the way he wanted. God had, God has a reason for everything, and he does it, and he does, and he does everything out of love. It was hard to pick a favorite verse, but this one has always spoke to me. Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plan, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. before God. I have always known who God was and what he does, but I never knew if I actually believe in him. Growing up, I was really good. I always did what I was told and re rarely ever pitch fits. Okay. <laughs> but I would still get things and obstacles that I didn't deserve. I thought, if God is actually real, why am I getting these things that I don't serve? I decided to give my life to God late last year. I was tired of never being fully happy and I wanted someone or something to lean on. Then I came to this church and I really like it and it reminds me every day and encourages me to keep going. I have learned that God's love for me is unconditional and that no one is as important as him. My, my, her favorite Bible verse is Isaiah 41.10, so don't fear, for I'm with you. Do not be dismayed, for I'm your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. If you met me two years ago, you would not see the girl you see now. I was lost and in Satan's grasp. I started isolating myself, hoping people would give up on me so I could help myself out of the hole I was in. But the harder I tried, the more I would fall. I ended up leaving the church because I was questioning God's goodness. I was telling myself, if he puts me here, why does he deserve my praise? Why does he, why does he deserve my love? I thought he was punishing me. I thought he was put there, or I thought he was put, he has put me there to watch me suffer because I did something wrong. I've been attending Grace Church for a long time, as, or for as long as I can remember, when I visited with my grandparents. But I left because I was so mad at him that I wanted nothing to do with it. What I had, what I had to learn was God didn't put me there. I put myself there through the choices I made. God gave me plenty of opportunities to make the right choice, and I always picked the wrong choice. I learned this at the SummerSlam of 2018. I received an invitation a couple days before SummerSlam reading. This is Staff Sergeant Terrence Knight, and I order you to be at SummerSlam. See you there. As much as I wanted to <laughs> just throw the invitation away, I didn't understand why I felt, or I didn't understand why, but I felt I shouldn't. I ended up going to SummerSlam, and most of it was spent during the activities and hanging out. But when it came time to watch Covington, or something happened, or something changed in my mind. It just clicked. Through the words he said and the way he said them just really had me thinking. God didn't put me there, but that's where I ended up, and I didn't end up there to be punished. I ended up there to become stronger so I could help other people. I was recently told by a friend's mom, thank you, because I saved her kid without even knowing it. I was able to help someone because of what I went through, and God knew I was able to do it before I was even born. He gave me my family, my home, and my church family to help me get through everything. God saw I had the willpower to change other people's lives, but first he wanted to change my own. My favorite verse in the Bible is Romans 8:18, 8, and it reads, The pain you are feeling can't compare to the joy that is coming. When I saw this verse, while in the place I was in, I realized the, that pain can't last forever, and everyone face, faces hardships, and I am no expe exception. Being in there, I was able to see how lucky I was to have such a caring family that would bend, back, bend over backwards for me, even with my attitude. 
Two years ago, all I saw was dark, but with the help of not just my family, but the church and God himself, I climbed out of the hole I was trapped in, and the light that I had shut out was shining through, and now I can turn and help other people to see the light as well.